last day of worship and prayer. And Monday, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, I received a text message from a person that I do not need to be talking to. And when that person sent me a message, immediately I started to feel like a panic attack was arising. Immediately I was like, this is Satan. Because he knows all of the momentum that we've been you know, advancing. And so he's going into the weak places to try to trigger something. And immediately I shut it down. And then this morning I woke up feeling sick and I thought I need to cancel. And the, and the Lord reminded me, no, this is the enemy. So guys, be watchful. Whatever comes your way this week, don't give in. Because the enemy knows we've been gaining more and more territory. We've been advancing. So don't lose your momentum because we have truly been advancing. I want you to open up your Bibles to Mark chapter 12. This topic is so amazing and I'm learning as well with you guys. We are on the topic of how to love the Lord. We're on the topic of the first and great commandment, which is the commandment that every believer needs to master, needs to achieve, and needs to um, focus on. I need someone to give me a time clock of 35 minutes. And we are on part 15. Last when was it like? No, two weeks ago, we were here and we talked about dying to our will. It is very important, guys, if you have not watched that sermon, I highly recommend that you do because this is the year of death. And that message is exactly what we're heading into. This is a year where God is going to require you to lay down your dreams, ambitions, desires. There will be moments where the Lord will ask you to die to your own will because part of loving Jesus requires death. The Bible says no greater love than he, than he who should lay down his life for his brother. So yes, obedience is part of loving the Lord, but also the sign of loving the Lord requires death. That you die to your own will and you say, Lord, not my will, but your will be done. So I highly recommend that you watch that uh, sermon. Mark 12, chapter, I'm sorry, Mark chapter 12, verse 30 to 31. And it says, you shall love the Lord your God. With all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind, and with all of your strength. This is the first commandment. The second is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no greater commandment. As believers, we need to learn to master this and get better and better at it as we grow in the Lord. And so we are right now in the, in the topic of the soul. We know that our soul consists of our mind our will and our emotions last week we finalized over the will the will is your desires your dreams uh, your impulses your cravings that is the will but today we're going to focus on your emotions you see our soul consists of also our emotions and our emotions are joy peace gratitude compassion anger sorrow all of the feelings that you experience that is all part of your soul in the emotional part and I need to remind you that two-thirds of the kingdom of God is also emotion. I say this all the time. Two-thirds of the kingdom of God is emotional. You should be feeling something as a believer. You should be having encounters with the Lord. You should be having experiences because the kingdom of God, let's go there so that I can prove you. It's in the Bible. Romans chapter 14, verse 17, and I want you to highlight it. Because if we're going to operate like the kingdom, we need to be living by it. Romans 14, 17, it says, For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. You see, two-thirds of that are emotions, peace and joy. Those two you can experience, you can feel, because two-thirds of the kingdom of God is emotion, is experience, is encounter. And peace and joy are feelings. It's something you can encounter and experience. And if you haven't felt anything in your walk with Jesus, if you haven't had encounters with the Lord, then you need to start asking the Holy Spirit who lives inside of you. And he's the one that reveals things inside of you. Ask him, why, why don't I feel anything, Lord? Or why haven't I felt you? Why haven't I felt your presence? Start asking him, Lord, is it a religious belief? Did, did somebody, when I went to church, say something 
that caused me to think I'm not supposed to feel? Is it because you are afraid to go deeper? You're afraid to have that supernatural encounter and you're afraid to look like those weirdos? Are you, are, is it because you're not fully surrendered to the, to the Lord that you are one foot in and one foot out? Is it because your soul is wounded and hurting? We're going to talk about that later. Is your soul wounded and hurting by what somebody said or did to you that it's overwhelming your ability to really engage and focus on the Lord. Ask the Lord, ask the Holy Spirit, Lord, why haven't I been able to feel you? Because two-thirds of the kingdom of God is emotional, is experience, is an encounter. But this love walk, this marriage with Jesus, you should have feelings towards the Lord. You see, part of loving the Lord is also the ability to feel and express your love to the Lord. You know, when you are in love, you do crazy things, right? You have the butterflies in your stomach when you know they're about to pick you up. You start feeling butterflies in your stomach. You start getting really excited, you know, and all of a sudden you want to hold their hand. You want to jump on their neck. Uh, you see, part of a relationship and love and, and marriage in a relationship, it involves and it takes feelings and emotions. And it's the same way with Jesus. If Jesus is the bridegroom and we are the bride, we should also have feelings for the bridegroom. I also want to remind you that Jesus is not a ghost. He's not a spirit. He's a real man. He's a real man. That means that Jesus also had feelings and he has feelings even now. When you look and study the life of Jesus in the Gospels, we saw Jesus cry multiple times. He cried when Lazarus died. He cried when he saw the people of Israel that they were lost. The Bible says his heart was moved with compassion. And remember, Jesus is a man, and this man is going to return back to the earth. His feet will touch the ground. How do we know that? Because when you go to the tomb, none of his bones remain there. That means that his whole physical body was resurrected along with him. So if Jesus is a real man, he has feelings and emotions. And, and if we are married to Christ, that means that I also should have feelings and emotions for Jesus. Because this is a marriage. I want you to go with me to the Song of Solomon 2. Now, Song of Solomon is a, a chapter or a book that a lot of people avoid reading and avoid preaching about. There are some believers that believe that, that this love chapter, the Song of Solomon, is, is, a, is a book specifically for married couples. And there, there are others, like me, that I believe that, that the Song of Solomon is a perfect depiction of the love of Christ towards the church. And I want you to see, when, when you get the chance, just read it. It's literally a novel. It's a novel of love. And both the bridegroom and both the woman are expressing their love for one another and their love moments to one another. But I want you to go with me. Let's go to Song of Solomon chapter 2. And I want to read how the woman is expressing her love for the bridegroom, which when I read it yesterday, I was like, <laughs> this is a love story. Go to Song of Solomon chapter 2 verses 8. It says, this is the woman speaking. The voice of my beloved, look, he comes leaping over the mountains, bounding over the hills. My beloved is like a gazelle or a young stag. Look, he stands behind our wall, gazing through the windows, looking through the lattice. My beloved speaks and says to me, rise up, my love, my fair one, and come away. For now the winter has passed. The rain is over and gone. The flowers appear on the earth. The time of singing has come. And the voice of the turtle dove is heard in our land. The fig tree puts forth its green figs. And the vines, their blossoms. And they give forth fragrance. Rise up, my love, my beautiful one, and come away. Oh, my dove in the clefts of the rock. In the secret places of the cliffs. Let me see your face. Let me hear your voice. For your voice is sweet. And your face is lovely. Catch the foxes for us, the little foxes that spoil the vineyards, for our vineyards are in blossom. My beloved is mine, and I am his. He feeds his flock among the lilies until the day breathes, and the shadows flee. Turn, my beloved, be like a gazelle or a young stag on the cleft mountains. 
Right here, the bride is expressing her passion, her love, her adoration, and even her desperation for the, for the bridegroom to be with her. You see, because we are married to Jesus, we should have feelings towards the Lord. You should feel joyful with Him. You should feel peaceful with Him. You should be angry when people rise up against the Bible. You should be angry when you see people mocking the name of Jesus. You should because you're married to Jesus. And you should have feelings for, for Him as well. You see, one way that we can express our love towards Jesus and yes, we know that the main evidence is obedience shows us that we love the Lord. But there's another way that we can show our love to Jesus. And the word is worship. The Greek word for worship is called proskunio. And proskunio means kiss. Every time you worship the Lord, you're kissing Jesus. And, the, and, and get your mind off of the gutter. It's not this perverted type of kissing. It's a kiss of like a king. It's a kiss that the king is nearby and the Persians used to do this. When the king would walk by, everybody would bow down and they would kiss the feet and the hands of the king. They were showing their honor, their love, their reverence, their respect for the king. That's what that means right here. It's not this rated R type of deal here. It's a reverent type of kiss. So every time we worship the Lord, we're kissing the hands and the feet of Jesus, telling the Lord, Lord, I love you. I love you and I want more of you. I'm thankful for you. I'm, my heart is filled with joy to know that you're part of my life. And every time we worship, we are showing and expressing our love for the Lord. That the Bible, the perfect chapter to find out how to worship the Lord is in the book of Psalms. The book of Psalms actually shows us how to worship the Lord. Unfortunately, there are very religious people in the church, global church, that they believe that music is demonic, they believe that instruments is demonic, where there is a whole book in the book of Psalms that tells us how to worship God. If you didn't know this, there is a way to worship God, and there is a standard to worship God. And there's different ways in worship that we express and show our love to the Lord. The first one is lifting up our hands. Psalm 63, 4. Let's go there. Psalm 63, 4. We're going to be in Psalms for a bit. Psalm 63, 4. It says, Thus I will bless you while I live. I will lift up my hands in your name. So one way to show worship is we lift up our hands. The other way we show our worship we show our love is bowing down and kneeling. Go to Psalms 95, 6. Psalms 95, 6. It says, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. Another way we show our love to Jesus is with thanksgiving and with shouting. Go to Psalms 95 again. Go up verse 2. It says, let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and let us shout joyfully to him with songs. Another way is through singing. Psalms 146 verse 2. Psalms 146 verse 2. And it says, I will praise the Lord while I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. Another way is through instruments. Psalms 33.2, Psalms 33.2, it's instruments. It says, give thanks to the Lord with the lyre, sing praises to him with the harp of, of ten strings. Another way we show our love to Jesus is through dancing. Not the twerking, <laughs> not the booty shaking, nope, that doesn't belong in the house of the Lord. <laughs> It's found in Psalms 149.3. It says, let them praise his name with dancing. Let them sing praises to him with timbrel and lyre. The next one is shouting. In Psalms 98.4, it says, shout joyfully to the Lord. All the earth, break forth and sing for joy and sing praises. 
These are all ways that we express our feelings. Our love for the Lord is through worship. That even King David did it. I want you to go very quickly to 2 Samuel verse, uh, chapter 6. We all know that King David loved the Lord so much. He didn't care about his title. He didn't care that he was a king. He didn't even care that he was married. He desperately, passionately loved the Lord. That when they brought back the Ark of the Covenant, he rejoiced. And he went nuts because he loved the Lord. And he very well expressed it. Let's go to 2 Samuel chapter 6, verses 14. It says, David danced before the Lord with all of his might, and he wore a linen ephod. So David and the whole house of Israel escorted the ark of the Lord with shouting and the sound of the horn. When the ark of the Lord entered the city of David, Michal, the daughter of Saul, looked down from the window. And upon seeking David, leaping and dancing before the Lord, she thought, she thought contemptuously of him in her mind. They brought the ark of the Lord and set it in its place inside the tent that David had erected for it. Then David offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before the Lord. When David had finished offering the burnt offerings and peace offerings, he blessed the people before the Lord. Look at what it says in verse 14. It says that he danced before the Lord with all of his might. David lost. He literally forgot. I am a king because you know that kings need to have some sort of demeanor and a decorum. But David didn't care. He says, I love the Lord so much. I'm going to express my feelings and my love for him that I'm going to dance with all of my mind. And we know this, that the Bible says that his clothes fell off of him because he was dancing so passionately for the Lord. And these are ways that we should be expressing our love for Jesus. You should have feelings of passion, of love. You should have these feelings for the Lord. All of these expressions of feelings of love towards the Lord. I remember one time, guys, I heard a pastor years ago, the pastor would say, do something you have never done before in order to receive something you've never received. And I never understood it until I put it to practice. So in my early years in walk with the Lord, when I was 12, 13 years old, when I gave my life to Jesus, I remember I would go to church. And you know, when you're young in the Lord, you're shy, you're embarrassed, you know, you don't lift up your hands, or if you do, you go like this, or you go like this, or you, you know, you don't even close your eyes. But then there got, there was a moment, guys, where I made the decision, you know what, I don't care how I look like. I don't care if I look like a fool. I'm going to express my adoration to the Lord. And I remember, guys, the first time I raised my hands all the way up. And the first time I closed my eyes, I was like, oh, my God. Something did happen inside of me. Something awakened in me. I literally began to feel the presence of God. I began to weep. I began to feel God because it's true. If you want to get something you've never received, you got to do something you've never done before. Think about this. If you want to be with Jesus, I love sometimes, I love this saying from Pastor Tommy. He would say, if you want to walk on water, you want to be with Jesus, you better step out of the boat. Because the people that stay in the boat never go out and meet Jesus in the supernatural ways of God. So if you want to encounter God in new ways, step out of your boat. Step out of your comfort zone. If you never raise your hands all the way up, do it. If you never close your eyes, do it. If you never got on your knees or prostrated yourself, do it. If you've never jumped, do it. If you've never shouted, do it. Because what you're doing, you're awakening your emotions and your expressions for the Lord. And there's a floodgate that comes when you express your feelings. The saddest thing about it, guys, is that, is that unfortunately a lot of men are very, very cold. They don't, they don't like to express or show any form of emotion. Sadly, and it's because of this tradition, right, that they tell the men, hey, men don't cry. Hey, men don't do this. And so what ends up happening, if you notice, sadly, in churches, who are the ones that are the most emotional and crying in the altar? The women. And the men, they're standing there cold. 
holding on to the arm of the chair, just looking around. Or some of them, they just go like this. But you never really see a man. I have found, I would say, a handful of men within services that I see them, and they're like King David. They go all out for Jesus. And every time I see those men, I start to cry. Because I'm like, Lord, this person, this man loves you. That they're willing to lay down their pride. They're willing to lay down their ego to show you, Lord, I love you. And men, it's not, it's not a weakness to cry before the presence of God. It's not a sissy act to jump and run around. It's not a sissy act to raise your hands and shout for joy. On the contrary, King David who was loved by thousands and all the women wanted him. He cared less about the opinions of the women. He cared less about the opinion even of his own wife, Michal, that he just danced mightily before the Lord because he wanted to prove to himself and to everyone else, I love the Lord. And so guys, that's part of what we're called to do. We're called to express our feelings, our emotions to the Lord. And yeah, there have been moments in my life where I have felt absolutely nothing. There have been moments where I'm in the middle of worship and I feel dry. I don't feel God. I see everybody else weeping and I'm like, Lord, what's wrong? I don't feel you. I'm not crying. Yes, there have been moments where I haven't felt anything. But I want to put an emphasis on this. When you go back and read the book of Psalms and it says, shout to the Lord, clap. Play with instruments. None of those things are a suggestion. Everything in the book of Psalms that says to shout, to jump, to do this is not a suggestion. It's a command. So if we are the followers of Jesus, we are actually commanded to clap, to jump, to dance, to shout. Because we're not doing it for you. You're not even doing it for me. You're doing it to the king of kings. You're doing it to your bridegroom, the one you are in love with, the one that you are married with. You're showing him I'm willing to die to my ego and my pride and my shyness to show you I love you. Even if I look like a fool, I'm going to do it. And I, and I kid you guys, I don't kid you on this. I want you to go to Psalms 143.3. One of the things that the enemy does is that he wants your soul. He's always in pursuit of your soul. Can someone read for me Psalms 143.3? For the enemy has persecuted my soul. He has crushed my life to the ground. He has made yeah. me dwell in dark places like those who have lost. Yeah, and one of the things the enemy wants is he wants your soul. Because once he enters a gateway in your soul, you literally become his puppet. All of a sudden, you're operating exactly how he wants you. If he can get into your emotions, all of a sudden, he already has your will. He will lead you to make the wrong decision, to walk away, to not spend time with the Lord. And then your mind will be on other things but the Lord. This is why the enemy is always targeting your soul. This is why you're always like this. Because the enemy is always trying to get your soul. But you can get to a place like this. You, your soul can become stable. Your emotions can, be, can become stable when you submit your emotions, your soul, to the Holy Spirit. If you haven't felt anything, it's probably because you have not submitted your emotions to the Lord. But when you submit your emotions, your soul to the Lord, all of a sudden things begin to take place. You know, Satan can even trigger your feelings in you. How? How do we do that? How do we allow him? Number one, through sin. Through music. Through movies. Through disobedience and rebellion. Through generational bloodlines. Through witchcraft. Through tarot cards. Through crystals. Through fear. Or a lie that you've been believing. That's how you let the enemy in your soul. And all of a sudden, you're cold. You don't feel anything. You don't feel peace. You don't feel joy. Yeah, because you let him in through one of those gates. You let him in. And so what, does, what is the enemy's goal? The enemy's goal is to keep you from obeying Jesus. He's trying to keep you from receiving breakthrough in certain areas in your life. He wants to keep you from encountering Jesus. He wants to keep you bound. And he wants to keep you from walking in your destiny. I want to share a testimony. 
that I that we're talking about feelings. I've had many, many moments in my life where I have not felt to praise the Lord. I have not felt peace. I have not felt joy. I have not even felt to praise the Lord or His presence. But I've learned since the age of eight how to combat my feelings. When I was eight years old, I battled in and out with depression. And the Holy Spirit Himself led me on my, my breakthrough. I didn't know it was the Holy Spirit. All of a sudden, when I would feel depressed at eight years old, I felt this impression to put on a VHS. Y'all know VHS. Y'all know VCRs. Y'all are still old. You're not that young. And so I would put this VHS of this guy called Ron Canoli from Integrity Music. And there was one song in, in that series that it was about praising the Lord. And I remember as I was listening to it, I was like, man, I don't feel nothing. I feel discouraged. I feel dry. I feel like giving up. But as he began to sing the song, I'm like, oh, my God. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. The next thing you know, I started to shout. I started to jump. I would get my tambourine. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so I began to recognize at eight years old, every time I feel depressed, I just, I got to put this one in. And it worked every single time. And so I learned at eight years old never to give in to my feelings because I've recognized how the enemy can use your own feelings to keep you from what God has for you. So in August, y'all know y'all been praying for me when I was dealing with insomnia. In August, this is where spiritual warfare really kicked in for me. I wasn't sleeping again for days, but then it intensified. It was like the fire went up. All of a sudden, in the middle of the night, guys, in August, I would start hearing demonic voices in my head. I would start hearing Satan telling me, get your gun and shoot yourself in the head. I would even hear the demonic laughs of the, of the devils uh, laughing at me at night. And there were moments where I felt the devil was even holding my breath while I was suffocating at night. And it was like that every single night. When one Friday night, you know, Friday nights are your chill days. So this Friday night, I received a phone call from somebody within this group. They're like, Miss Kayla, we invite you to go out and eat with us. And I'm like, no, I just, you know, I'm, I'm tired. I haven't slept. I feel very drained. I've been in spiritual warfare. I just do not feel like hanging out with people. And I said, I'm sorry. So I was about to get in my bed and watch Hulu. And, and, and it, you know how we do. We have this logical process of thinking what works best for me. Right? So I had this logical thought. Let me get on my bed and let me stay in bed. And let me watch Hulu and let me watch some movies just to get my mind off of things. And all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit said, no. Get out of your bed and begin to praise me. And I said, Lord, you're right. Mind this. I haven't slept for days. I'm physically tired. Mentally, I'm out. I've been fighting in my mind. I, I'm emotionally all over the place. But when the Holy Spirit told me to praise, I said, okay, Lord, I will. So I get on my TV and I put on these songs. And all of a sudden, this boldness rose within me. I felt, you know how the Bible says that the righteous are bold as a lion. I felt it, guys, rise up within me. And I got one of these flags. And I looked down at the floor. And I said, Satan, watch me praise Jesus. Watch me praise Jesus. You want me to stay in bed? You want me to be bound? Well, let me rub it in your face. You're not going to steal my joy. You're not going to steal my peace. You've already stole my sleep. You've already stole everything. Well, I'm going to rub it in your face. I'm going to praise Jesus until I'm tired. And guys, I put it on full blast. And my mom, she hears me all the time. <laughs> and I'm with my flag. Hallelujah! And I'm singing with, along with the song and mind this I'm tired and I'm like hallelujah hallelujah and if I didn't feel like dancing nobody you're going to keep dancing hallelujah, hallelujah. guys I praised the Lord for three to four hours non-stop I was sweating it was a workout but when I finished praising the Lord it broke why because I do not live by my emotions. Worshiping Jesus is not a suggestion, is a command. And if you have not felt the presence of God, if you haven't felt joy and peace, I recommend you praise the Lord. Because that is the floodgates that open up your freedom and your
your miracle. And I get so righteously angry. Oh, my God. Because remember, I've been learning how to do this since, the, since I was eight years old. I get righteously angry when I start hearing people, oh, I'm sick, I can't go. All this and all that and la, 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 la. And in my head, I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? That you're going through warfare. This is not a time for you to stay home and sleep. This is not a time for you to, to take a five-hour nap and watch Netflix. You are in warfare. You need to praise the Lord. I get angry because I'm like, Lord, you've given us so many weapons and people yet don't want to use it. Because a lot of times, let me tell you this, a lot of times people want Jesus to fight the battle for them. When they, what do they want to do? Just chillax, Jesus fight for me watching Netflix. Sorry, that's not how it works. Yes, the battle is the Lord's. Yes, the Lord will fight for you, but you are also part of the army of God. Hello, we have to wear an armor. This is the battle. If this were not a battle, why would Paul put in the Bible, put on the armor of God? Hello, you are in a battle. And you need to put on the armor of God and actually use it. It's not like the armor is going to do it for you. No, he gave you a sword. It's called the word of the Lord. And he called you and anointed you to fight. While you are fighting, he's fighting with you and through you. This is why, guys, when you're feeling discouraged, you're feeling sick in your body, you're feeling all of this, that's not your time to leave. That's not your time to stay in bed. That's not your time to say, you know what? I'm going to give myself a break. No, I'm sorry. I remember John Ramirez said, this is not a, the Christian walk is not a cruise ship, it's a battleship. And if you think that this is a cruise control, you're in the wrong religion. Because Christianity is all about warfare, but you always win every time when you use the weapons of your warfare. And so, guys, I want to encourage you. Guys, I feel physically sick. And I made the decision today, I'm not going to give in to my feelings. I don't feel like being here today, but I'm not going to give in to my feelings. Because Jesus is worthy of my praise. He's worthy of my attention. And not only that, there's always breakthrough and miracle when you persevere. And so tonight, I want to encourage you. We're going to praise the Lord. In Psalms 103, this, I find this so interesting. In Psalms 103, David was actually talking to his soul. In the whole chapter, he kept telling the soul, pray lord soul praise the lord soul why because the human part of the soul doesn't want to you want to stay home and relax you want to take it easy you want the easy route you want the convenient route but david understood the the, the spiritual the spiritual principles he understood that he had to speak to his soul and encourage the soul so you don't want to praise the lord right now Rejoice, sing, shout, jump, jump. Because our soul doesn't want to. But guys, I don't know where you're at. I don't know where you're, how you're feeling. But let me tell you, tonight, go all out. Go all out. We might not have a full bag yet. But you know who is present? Jesus. You're not praising for the band. You're praising Jesus. So tonight when we worship... If you've never raised your hands all the way up, do it. If you've never closed your eyes, do it. If you've never gotten on your knees, do it. Do something tonight that you've never done before. Because that's how it begins. That's how the flood the floodgates of your love for Jesus and your freedom comes forth when you step out of the boat. So I want us to get up on our feet. I want us to take communion, actually, tonight. Noah, can you help me with the communion? <laughs> and guys, each and every one of us, we're going to go through seasons when we don't feel like praising the Lord, when we don't feel anything for Jesus. But remember, some of these feelings can be very deceitful. When you do not have discernment in the spirit, 
Immediately you give in to your feelings. Oh, I feel so sad. And you put yourself in this pit. But you got to grow up. You got to discern. You got to grow in maturity to recognize when I'm feeling discouraged. Uh, 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 that's not me. I'm going to show one more testimony as we're passing the cups around. Around 2018, I was going again through a very discouraging season in my life. I was upset at the Lord, depressed, discouraged. Oh, wow. I preach a long time, but it was good. Oh, okay, good. Well, I started when you said something. Okay, awesome. And so in this season in my life, I was praying, I was having devotional, I was reading my Bible, I was going to church, and yet I couldn't feel God. I, I, it felt, guys, like my prayers were hitting the wall, and I'm like, God, where are you? And I was feeling so sad. And all of a sudden, I remember I was walking downstairs in my job. And I was feeling so discouraged. And immediately I said this out loud in my mouth. I said, my joy does not come, does not come because of the circumstances or who I have or do not have. And I literally spoke to my soul. I said, I will be joyful because Jesus is my joy. At that moment, guys, poof, that broke. And I had a revelation. I was like, that's it. That was the key. Jesus is joy. And I can be joyful because Jesus lives inside of me. He is joy. So I will be joyful. And the next thing you know, I started to smile. I started to sing. Why? Because joy is not based upon what's going on in your life. Joy is a person and, is, and that person is Jesus Christ. You can make the choice to be joyful because you have a person named Jesus Christ that lives inside of you and he's your joy. And part of our walk with Jesus is expressing our love to him. Well, tonight is your night to express it. So we're going to take communion before we get there. <clears throat> Christina, can you help me with the words today? Oh. For the song. Let's take the bread. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for the bread. We thank you for the body of Jesus. We thank you, Jesus, that you didn't want to die for us in that way, but you died to yourself, to your will, and you gave your body as a sacrifice so that we can be healed physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. So we thank you, Jesus, for your body that was broken. Go ahead and take the bread. Before we take the cup, go ahead and re-examine yourself. The Bible says to examine yourself. Least condemnation come upon you because you took it unworthily. Father, we just thank you for the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus is so powerful that devil hates the blood of Jesus. We thank you that the blood of Jesus destroyed the power of sin, the power of sickness, the power of generational curses, the power of addictions off of our lives forever. We thank you Lord, that through the blood of Jesus we are completely cleansed from our sins. That the Father has no memory of what we've done. So we thank you for the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, we just thank you for tonight's word. We thank you, Father, that you're reminding us that part of loving Jesus involves our emotions. That it involves us expressing our love and our devotion to Jesus. And so, Father, tonight we're going to step out of our comfort zone. We're going to step out of the boat. And we're going to do things that we've never done before. Father, I thank you that those that have been dealing with so much internally, I thank you that through their praise, they will be delivered. Through their praise, they will find joy, they will find peace, they will find the freedom that they've been seeking out for. And so, Father, we're coming to you. We're going to give you the best praise that you deserve because you alone are worthy of the praise. In Jesus' name.
Can you give Jesus a clap and a shout? Are you guys, are you guys hot or are you guys okay? Louder than before. Oh. 
sing a little louder than before. Oh, 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 oh. I want to jump higher than before. Yeah. Oh, I want to shout a little louder than before. Hallelujah. Oh, I want to say
close your eyes and I want you to envision Jesus right in front of you. Envision Jesus right in front of you and you're singing these songs to him. And you'll watch and see all of a sudden, poof, the floodgates come in and you begin to feel him.
God, I just pray for these righteous leaders, that you continue to give them the boldness and the courage to stand up for what is true, holy, and righteous, that they will not be influenced or pressured, Father, by this left woke agenda, by the mob that keeps threatening them to cancel them. Father, let them not fall a victim to their threats. But may you give them the boldness and the courage to stand so tall like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. That when everyone bowed to their God, they decided to stand tall. Father, I pray for those righteous leaders that they will be like that, like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that they will never bow their knees. Father, we speak a divine protection upon them, Father, that any form of threats over their lives or family will not come near them. Bless a hedge of protection around them, Father, that no weapon formed against them shall prosper. May you guide them, Father, in their steps, that no form of evil will come their way. We plead the blood of Jesus over these righteous leaders, Father. And may you continue to give them the boldness and the courage to stand firm and consistent. May they never compromise, Father, to get the vote. But they may stand firm on what is biblical and holy and righteous in you, Father, despite what people say about them. We bless them in the name of Jesus. true God, one true King, Lord. Would you 
open the eyes of the blind, God? Would you open the eyes and remove the fogginess, Lord? Remove the lies and the filters that culture is giving about you, Lord. And would you expose the lies, Father? Would you begin to call your people out and make them accountable, Lord? No more playing with sin. No more sitting in comfortability, Father. But would you make us get up our butts and actually serve you and do the work of the kingdom, Lord? Would the fear of man be gone right now in the name of Jesus? Would instead you rip that fear out from the root, Lord, and replace it with your reverence and with the fear of you, Lord? Lord, we desire to have a true reverence of God, Lord. And I thank you, God, that this year that you will show your glory, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that this nation must be consecrated, Father. That in the consecration and in the obedience is when we truly get to see you in your glory. So, Lord, I thank you. Would we be, would we be a nation that desires to be consecrated, Lord? That desires to be purified, Father? No more mixing, no more lukewarm, no more yes, half yes, and half no, Lord. Because that's just a no, that's just disobedience, and we don't want that anymore, Lord. Full obedience or nothing, God. Full obedience or nothing. Full surrender or nothing, Lord. Would we be a nation that just surrenders everything that we have, God? Would our desires no longer be for this world or worldly possessions or worldly titles, Lord? But would it be for you? Would it be to see your kingdom move, God? Would we be a nation that moves when God moves? Would we be a nation that speaks when God tells us to speak, Lord? I thank you that you are removing the mouths of the enemy, not the mouths, the hands of the enemy from our mouths, God. Would we no longer sit in silence, Lord? Would we no longer stand and listen to people talk about you or mock you, Lord, or say mean things about you, Father, in silence? But would we speak up, Lord? Would we fight for you? Would you place in us a righteous anger, Lord, that will stand up for the kingdom and stand up for you, God? I thank you that we would begin to love you like we've never loved you before, Lord. And in that love, we would find true reverence, Lord. Yes. Would you be the one thing that we wake up and be excited about is to spend time with you? Yes. Lord, all of our dreams, all of our passions, all of our will, Lord, would we surrender it before you, God? And would you place your desires and your passions and your will inside of us, Lord? May that be what we long to do, Lord. May we be a nation that is known for how we love God. Yeah. May we be a nation that is known for how we serve God and how we how we worship, Lord. Yeah. Lord, I thank you that this year that we will begin to kiss you like we've never kissed you before, Lord. Yeah. That we would worship you with everything that we have. <coughs> Lord, I thank you that you're removing the old yeah. and exposing the lies. And would we make that choice out of a place of love and reverence to choose you instead of this world, to choose you instead of the people of this world? Lord, I thank you that if there's any, any hindrances, Lord, in our personal lives or in this nation that is keeping us from you, Lord, we say, take it. We don't want it. We want nothing but you, God. And I thank you that you would come and dwell in this nation, that you would live with your people that you would rest with your people, that we would be a nation worthy of hosting your presence, yeah. that is worthy of hosting for you to rest and lay your head, Lord. Even with this ministry, God, I thank you that we are sparking revival in this city that will pour out into the cities around us and the states around us until this nation knows nothing but the presence of God and desires nothing but the presence of God. Lord, I thank you that your presence changes everything. So would we be a nation known for your presence, Lord? That people would come to the U.S. just to be in your presence, Lord, because it is unlike anything anywhere else, Lord. Would your presence be so thick and tangible upon this nation, Lord? Would a cloud rain down and just hover above the nation, Father God? Would the sky split open and you begin to pour out and rain out your blessings and your favor, Lord? I declare a supernatural protection over America, Father God. I thank you that all of the corrupt people in power must go, Lord. That you are removing them and uprooting every 
corrupt system, Lord, everything that's been around for years that may, we may not even see, God. We thank you that we send out our army of angels to take care of the battles that we cannot see, God. All of the people in power that we do not see behind closed doors who pretend to be good and godly and are not. I thank you that you are removing every person that does not belong in power, Lord. I thank you that the enemy has no foothold, Lord. I thank you that this year America will be set free from suicidal thoughts and depression, Lord. Lord, I thank you that America would no longer have such high suicide rates, Lord, but that it will decrease instead, God. And their testimonies of all the people who struggled with it would be you, Lord. That that they just encountered you and that they were never the same, Lord. The anxieties, Lord, the worries, the financial struggles, the debt, Father God, I thank you that all of it is taken care of in your presence, God. So when we seek you, Lord, first, and when we seek you, we would find you and we would know you and we would understand you, Lord. I thank you that your love is contagious. So would you teach your people how to truly love you and truly worship you again? And would their lives be testimonies for every person that they meet, God? Would salvation just be like a wildfire throughout this nation, Lord? And your presence would be like a wildfire, Lord. That once they hear about God, they can't go back. And once they hear about him, they never stop hearing about him. Because we never want to shut up about you, Lord. May we be a people who never shuts up about the goodness and the faithfulness of God. May you be everything we want to talk about, Lord, and everything we want to see, everything we want to hear. Lord, I thank you that you're continue to, continuing to consecrate us, Father God. Lord, I thank you that that holy conviction will hit harder than it's ever hit before and it wouldn't be a struggle anymore it wouldn't be uh oh i don't know if i should or i shouldn't maybe i should give this up it wouldn't be a no absolutely not the lord does not want me to listen to this to see this to be with this person or around these people to watch this lord and immediately we would choose you lord immediately we would run from the things that we created relationships with lord and the people that we created relationships with lord would we continue to choose you and consecrate and purify ourselves to come before you, holy Lord, and spotless in the name of Jesus. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I declare like Amanda said that America will be a nation that will fear the Lord. Father, I declare that this is the year, Father, as your prophet says, that the fear of the Lord will come and rest and abide in the hearts of your people. And I thank you, Lord, that here in America, the church, the fear of God will dwell upon their hearts. That they will see that God is omnipotent, that God is almighty, that he must be reverenced, honored, respected, and obeyed. Yeah. And so, Father, we just thank you that the fear of the Lord is coming upon this nation. That they're realizing that there is a God and he is real and he is greater than any other God. And so, Father, we just thank you that the fear of God is increasing in the hearts of your people here in America. In Jesus' name. Father God, I just want to pray over social media, Lord. I thank you that the platform that the enemy has created for evil, Lord, that you will take it over and we will begin to see nothing but godly words and godly prayers and godly decorations. Lord, um, declarations, Lord, I thank you that you are just... We just give you social media, Lord. We give you our personal social media accounts. We give you social media as a whole, Lord. We thank you that it is yours and it is your tool, Lord. It is no longer the devil's tool, Father God. I thank you that instead of a weapon that is used to bully people, Father, or lie to them, I thank you that now it is exposing truth, Lord. That it is exposing truths that can no longer be hidden, Lord. That things are coming to the light and surfacing, Lord. Uh, resurfacing or surfacing just for the first time, Lord. I thank you that people will begin to see things they've never seen before, Lord, they would be, be able to see the corruption, see the lies, and see the truth, which is your word and your will, Father God. So I thank you that you are just doing a movement with social media, Lord. Every platform in every nation, Father God, I thank you that it is yours and that we will begin to see how you will use this tool, Lord. I thank you that it is yours and yours alone.
uh, as the secular world begins to implode turn on each other, I pray that the uh, Holy Spirit reveals to them the, the flaws in their own ideologies, Father God, and that hopefully that these angels can intervene where these demons whisper things. Instead, they hear whispers from angels that perhaps maybe there's better answers in you, Father God. That whatever questions they have, whatever uh, issues that are transpiring inside of them, when it comes to like gender identity or uh, their sexuality, Father God, I, I pray that they realize, that the Holy Spirit helps them realize how detrimental it is to their own health, Father God. Not only that, but their soul, Father God. I, I, I pray that the Holy Spirit whispers into their ears just how precious their souls are, Father God, and that, and that they develop this newfound worth with their soul and that they begin their journeys seeking you, Father God. I pray that on these journeys, like the same the same way that every every speed bump that I hit on the way to you, Father God, I, I pray that they, they find the same knowledge and clarity that I found, Father God. I pray that the Holy Spirit reveals to them that their journey in faith isn't just going to happen overnight, but it's like a muscle that you just got to keep growing, Father God, and that they just keep working at it, Father God, and that, and that eventually they get to that point where they find you the way I found you, Lord. And I pray that the Holy Spirit clarity gives them comfort in their own skin. That this is like a, a circular effect that it affects the world around them. Spreads around and it's contagious. The Holy Spirit and and how it makes us comfortable who we are. I pray this over everyone's families in here right now. Anybody who has a a cousin or a, or a, a sibling or an aunt or an uncle that's just struggling right now. They have so much frustration in them. And I just I, I pray that as well that our our fruits of being saved. It, 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 our, our, our being saved reflects on us and that the people around us who are struggling with these issues see this and they begin to want to taste they begin to to have a desire see maybe just maybe that your word is the way and not their way that you are God and that we are completely incapable of being our own God look out to the world and we see man trying to be his own God. We see how bad we screw it up. The way I see it, Father God, that's always been the anchor of my faith. Whenever I feel like I'm falling away from you, Lord, I look out and I see just how bad the world has become and I remember that your objective moral values are the foundation of all goodness and I, and I pray that this is revealed to America as well. Just as it's been revealed to me. If you can change me, you can change any person. If you can shape my mind, you can shape any mind in America. And I pray that this happens on a global, global scale, as a matter of fact, before Jesus return. Anybody we can change, anybody we can we can we can light the light the path for, Father God. I pray that you give us the strength. We're like a team, you know, we're your light, Lord. And houses of worship and prayer in every city and in every state all over America. That America will be covered with the glory of the Lord. Father, your word says that the earth will be covered with the glory of the Lord. Father, I speak that over America. That you're raising up people of every age, of every ethnicity that are creating houses of worship and prayer in every city and every state where all of the nation of America is saturated with the presence of God. Where you, Father, will be pleased by these houses that have become a dwelling place for you. We speak that over America in Jesus' name. Come on, guys, five more minutes. Come on. Step out and pray. Spark up a new 
never had before, never experienced before, Lord. I thank you that every other God, every false idol, Lord, everything else that we've spent time and money worshiping God, would you remove it? Lord, I declare that this nation is a nation that only loves you, the one true King, Lord, the one true God. Lord, I thank you that this nation is beginning to move and prepare the way for your return, Lord. Father God, I thank you that you say that the people who are faithful and little will be faithful and much, so would we be a nation that is faithful in what we have, Lord? Not just with money, but with our time, Lord. With what we worship, with what we see, everything that we do, Lord, may, may we be completely faithful to you, Lord. I thank you for your people, God, the ones that have suffered much this last year, Lord, and I thank you that you are bringing a season of harvest, Lord. I thank you for financial prosperity, Lord, for jobs to align, for new homes, new cars, Lord, new land. Father, I thank you that you are making a way when there is no way, and though things seem rough, that you have already prepared the way for us, Lord. May we be obedient into just going where you ask us to go and doing what you ask us to do, Lord. Father, I pray over the porn industry, Lord. I think that you are just destroying it, Lord. You are ending it right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you that this nation as a whole would stop watching those demonic and evil and twisted and unholy things, Lord. Would their eyes become bored and tired of it, Lord? Would they begin to hate it and disgust it, Lord? Would we treat our eyes as the window to our soul, Lord, as a window to the Holy Spirit, God, and would we choose to watch only what you say is good, Lord? No more wasting time on demonic series that aren't even that good, Lord. But instead, would we watch things that honor you and worship and glorify you, Lord. And the same with the music industry, Lord. I say it's yours. No more demonic rituals. No more evil producers. No more demonic spirits, Lord. Lord, I thank you that the music industry is yours and it is made, Lord. That you made music to worship you. So would you restore the meaning of music, Lord? Would you cleanse it, Father God? Would you purify it and consecrate it, Father God? I thank you that we would choose to listen to the things that glorify and honor you, Lord. No more of letting things into our spirit that do not belong, Lord. I thank you that those the, the music and the things we watch, Lord, that it's just going to not satisfy us anymore, that we won't enjoy it, Lord. But instead, would we just only enjoy your presence and the things that glorify and honor you, Lord. Hold us, 
hold us, keep us firm in the faith that you are healing us every day, that you are making us better humans for these kids and for each other, Lord. I just give you all of our souls. Please protect all of our minds and spirits and bodies as we walk in this age. We walk for you, Lord. We are ready for you. And I just ask that you bring all these little kids that are alive today there alongside of us, Lord. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Father, I pray just as you continue to expose the demonic agenda in the music here in America, Father, expose the power in the Christian music at the same time. Father, I pray that as people are becoming more aware how the music is so demonic, Father, introduce them to a greater power that is found in praise and worship. That all of a sudden, something clicks inside of them that they'll recognize if that's demonic, then there has to be something godly. That they begin to listen to godly Christian worship and music. That all of a sudden, their mood, their perspective, the atmosphere change. That they'll realize, oh man, there is truly power here. Father, we just thank you, Lord, that there is an awakening and even the secular people and the believers that still listen to secular worldly music, there's an awakening to the power of praise and worship. That it truly it soothes our soul. It delivers our soul as we worship you, as we praise you. And so we thank you that there is a revelation and exposing of the power in praise and worship, Father, in Jesus' name.
pray and worship the Lord. I'm going to keep that consistency. You're going to watch and see that that flame that the Lord has started in us is going to continue to grow. So let's pray out. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for tonight. That tonight we just encounter the sweet love of Jesus. We just thank you, Lord, for a friendly reminder and a fresh encounter of the love of Jesus towards us and how much we love him. And Father, I just pray that even today's message is a friendly reminder that there is power in praise and worship. That instead of giving in to our feelings of discouragement, depression, and sorrow, that we won't cave into those feelings, but that we will worship you and praise you so that we can receive joy, peace, and a breakthrough. That worship and praise is our weapon to encountering and feeling the love of God, feeling joy. And so, Father, I just pray for this week. We just thank you that you're going to give us the power and the grace to keep pursuing you, that this flame will continue to burn within us, Lord, that people will know we are in love with Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for tonight. In Jesus' name we all say, Amen.